they want to know number one about the tone. They want to like kind of emphasize that this is like heartfelt and funny. And they want yeah. you to opinions about the overall tone. How would you describe it? So for this movie, I felt like I wanted it to be real, first of all, like that was the main priority. And I felt like if it was very credible and authentic with all these people in this world, it would still be funny. So it, it was meant to be, I guess, a drama with comedy. Usually it's a comedy with a drama. I flipped it. Let's go right to the firefighters represented in the film. Talk about their, their place in the film and how valued they are currently in this state of the world. One of the you know, most powerful parts of making the movie was we got to spend a lot of time with firefighters. And I was talking to one one day and I said, is it like annoying when you have to go out on a call and it turns out to be nothing or it's just somebody, you know, twisted their ankle? Or, and the guy said, you know what? The truth is, it sounds corny, but we just love helping people. And he was so sincere that it, it was really moving. And that's what we wanted to make the movie about. People who de dedicate their entire lives just to helping people. And there's nothing more important than that. I think we see with everything that's going on that not just firefighters, but all sorts of different people are putting themselves at risk to keep the world moving, to help people in all sorts of ways. Uh, it, it's not just nurses and uh, people who work in grocery stores and people who deliver things and police officers. It's really anybody who's dealing with the public right now is taking a risk to help others. And we all need to take the time to appreciate that. Let's go right into the word of mouth. I mean, honestly, I've heard buzz and I'm like, how did you hear about it? Like people are already talking about this movie, man. They're, they're ready for it. Talk about the word of mouth or the early good review buzz that you've heard. I hear people, someone told me there's word of mouth. I haven't heard that yet. No one's word of mouthed me, but others are telling me they've heard word of mouth and that it's positive, so that's very exciting. The funny part about it is a lot of people have said to me, the trailer made me cry, which is a salute to the marketing people. And then I'm like, man, I hope the movie's as good as that trailer. They certainly nailed their, their side of things. <laughs> Since we're still, even though things are starting to open up, we're still kind of shut in and sheltered in like, you know, the types of movies that people are watching as they're at home, you know, a lot. And why this movie in particular is like a really good movie to watch at home. Yeah. One of the reasons why we were excited to have it come out now on Video On Demand is it is a movie about first responders. Uh, in the movie, Pete's mom is a nurse and his father was a firefighter. And the movie really is about heroes and it's a tribute to their sacrifice. And it felt like at this moment, the movie could you know, make you laugh, but also help you process a lot of the trauma we're all experiencing right now. Why people should buy King of Staten Island on Blu-ray and digital. And yeah. if you could mention some of the bonus features, okay. that'd be great. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I, okay, ready? I personally am a fan of uh, the DVD extra. I don't know if you are Pete, but I, I listen to the commentaries. I watch the little documentaries. I love the deleted scenes and the bloopers. And on all our movies, we really go to town making all that stuff. Do you watch it, Pete? Do you watch all those things when you uh, watch Blu-rays or digital downloads? Yeah, I always love to see all the deleted scenes. Like the cool thing about you know this movie is we shot you know, I assume 100 hours of film. So there's just constant different takes and different scenes and like a lot of fun stuff that you might have missed in the movie that, you know, just didn't fit it that you could see on these platforms. You and I did a commentary. I thought a good one. I thought we were yeah. focused. We were energetic. We were on our game commentary wise. Uh, we have a lot of good documentaries about uh, firefighters and your your friends, all the great comedians in the movie. Uh, we also have pieces about your life and your history, as well as a lot of deleted scenes. I shot more scenes than I needed, so I have to put them somewhere. I, I didn't want to just throw them in the garbage, so 
I, I give them to you. Sometimes people go, that scene was better than other scenes in the movie. And then I feel bad that I, I cut it out. That was good. And, and if you wouldn't mind just uh, encouraging people to, to, to buy yeah. it on, on Blu-ray and digital. Yeah, yeah. I, I always tell people to buy the movie on Blu-ray or digital or KODI because there's extra stuff. Uh, you know, when I, when I finish a movie, if I'm watching Goodfellas, the first thing I'm thinking is, where's the commentary? Where's the hilarious Ray Liotta bloopers? So I try to provide that on my movies. You're the Ray Liotta blooper, Pete. That's awesome. I'm, <laughs> that's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Okay, great. great. All right, so the next uh, topic is about the uh, shooting locations, uh, you know, what we covered. So Pete, if you wanna touch on the following, they wanna talk about the Staten Island Ferry, uh, St. George Park, and honestly, your favorites in particular. Um, when we started working on the movie, the first thing we did is a, a location scout in winter, and Pete came with us, and we just drove around in vans with our production designer, Kevin Thompson, and Pete showed us all the spots that he thought would let people know what Staten Island was really like. We went to Danino's to get pizza, and we went to St. George Park, and we, you know, we found a you know, weird basketball court that had been overgrown by weeds. And I think that's what makes the movie feel so authentic is, you know, we didn't go to Jersey to shoot it. We stayed on Staten Island. We got uh, Lake Avenue next. We shot a lot of the movie on Lake Avenue where we uh, were shooting in a family home. And it was really great being there every day because Everyone in the neighborhood would come by to say hi to us. And we were all just hanging out on the street in between takes and people were walking up to Pete and Pete would take pictures of them with his shirt off. Um, I want to go to, uh, I want to go to the firehouse now. Engine 163, ladder 83. I love shooting in, in the firehouse. It, it was really intense because we'd be shooting the movie and then the real uh, firefighters, they were working. They were there doing their thing and every once in a while, you know, the, the bell would go off and they would go help somebody with something, you know, find a fire or deal with some, some issue. And, and we would get nervous for them. And it reminded us, this is real. These people really put themselves in harm's way to help people. It was a great reminder of why we were making the movie. What makes Staten Island, King of Staten Island, a perfect movie at home? I think the King of Staten Island is the perfect movie to watch at home because uh, you'll laugh, but I think you might cry and don't, you prefer crying without people around you, looking at you, judging you, mocking you. You know, if you want to really let it go, I mean, let it go. Wailing, making noise, snot, tissues. You want to do that at home on your own personal movie night. Uh, just uh, real quick, what was the last movie you guys watched at home? Last movie I watched at home, Pete, was a South Korean horror movie called The Wailing. And let me say this to the people at home. Get it and be freaked out. If you like to be freaked out, I usually don't like to be freaked out, but I found it funny and it freaked me out and I really enjoyed it. My, my, my daughter, Maude, who's in the movie, uh, she loves South Korean horror movies and I never knew what she was talking about. And now I get it. What are three things you must have with you on movie night? Three things I need are my glasses, or I can't see it, chocolate ice cream, and an extra pillow so my wife can't see I'm eating chocolate ice cream. <laughs>